Okay, so um, uh, finance platforms uh, burst into the public consciousness in January of 2021, as many of you know, when there was a trading frenzy uh, in GameStop and other so-called meme stops, stocks. So that was a $6 stock that shot up on an intraday high of almost $500 within a couple of weeks, and then it dropped below $100. Other stocks showed similar, if less dramatic, volatility. And so um, focusing on finance platforms, gamification, game stock, these raised lots of issues. Stock market structure, retail traders, role of Reddit, duties of broker dealers, market makers, short selling, hedge funds, high frequency trading firms, payment for order flow. Um, after a while, your eyes can glaze over because the issues are broad, deep, and complex. Um, the good news is I'm not going to talk about most of that today. Uh, I'm going to focus on finance platforms and customer abuses. However, you should know there's a ton of information on all those subjects and basically everything else that relates to financial and economic policy making in Washington on our website at www.bettermarkets.org. If you search either GameStop or gamification, you'll find tons of details on everything from short selling to you name it. But now turning to the platforms, um, what are their claim? Their key claim is to democratize finance. They claim no cost, ease of access, ease of use, a delightful experience, uh, giving people what they want, and it all is supposed to equal bringing the stock market to the masses, not just rich insiders. What does that sound like? Bringing it to the masses. It's just like Facebook. Oops, I meant meta. Um, so, but Robinhood and other finance platforms aren't just platforms like Facebook and elsewhere. They're broker dealers registered with the SEC. They're subject to numerous state and federal laws and self-regulatory organizations like FINRA. And yes, we think SROs are more often an oxymoron than not, but occasionally they do their job. And it was demonstrated in actions that the SEC brought against Robinhood in December of 2020. Uh, the state of Massachusetts sued them in Massachusetts State Court, and FINRA brought an action against uh, Robinhood in June of 2021, if I'm remembering right. So what do these finance platforms do? Um, well, their biggest claim is they say commission-free trading. But the problem is people hear free trading, which is what the media itself often irresponsibly says. But you got to ask yourself, uh, and Alexis could testify to this, how many things are free on Wall Street? Well, let's be concise. How about none? Um, so when somebody says something is free, especially in finance, the questions are, and I know I'm channeling Alexis here because she knows better than anybody about all the free stuff on Wall Street. Um, but you're going to say, so where is the cost hidden? Who's paying it? And how much is the cost? Uh, well, here we know the answers. So where is the cost hidden? They moved a disclosed, clear, visible, upfront commission cost to a hidden cost of trading. So who's paying it? Well, the retail trader, of course. And so how much is how much is the cost? Well, it's very little per trade, but tens of billions of dollars in total. And even the little part of the trade, they like to they, they claim that somewhere between 0 0.0025 cents on every trade. Uh, but there's more recent research that showing shows it may be as much as two cent two percent of every trade. So what are the real costs? Well, here free is just another word for everything you have to lose. My apologies to Janice Joplin, and for those, all of you who are too young to know, you can look it up on the internet. But so what do you have to lose? Your money, your savings, your house, your marriage, none of which you can afford to lose. So how does the finance platform's cash machine really work? Well, it's called payment for order flow. Nearly all of the supposedly commission-free retail brokers, whether it's Robinhood, E-Trade, Schwab, TD Ameritrade, uh, Ameritrade um, all of them who have most of the main street retail investors receive what's called payment for order flow. And that means those brokers sell their customers orders for stocks and options to high frequency trading firms like Citadel. And those HFT firms execute those orders, sending them back to the retail brokers customers and paying those brokers like Robinhood for the right to execute their trades. That's the platform's business model. In 2020, Robinhood received reportedly about $700 million in payment for order flow from HFT firms. It was somewhere in the neighborhood of 80% of their gross revenue that year. And it's been reported, including in connection with their IPO this year, uh, that the amount of money they're receiving is significantly higher. 
And the small chart on the right, which uh, kind of gives you a sense of the scale of payment for order flow. It's interesting because Robinhood actually makes significantly more money per customer than any other retail broker, according to some very good recent robust studies. So, uh, and there was a good article in Protocol, data shows how Robinhood makes more money from its users than other brokers. I'm not gonna go over this, but the big blue line on the right tells you how much more money per customer Robinhood makes than its competitors, which is astonishing. And then from that article, it says, all facets of Robinhood's business model are designed to maximize order routing revenue. It's the most aggressive version of the retail brokerage payment for order flow model that facilitates this level of trading activity. Now, how is uh, payment for order flow work? Now this slide violates everything Jennifer told me not to do. Um, and the following slides are also like that. And I'm not gonna go over this. We have these slides on our um, website. It was actually appendix C to my testimony to the House Financial Services Committee hearing on GameStop on March 17, 2021. And I'm just going to fly through these slides and not really say anything, but this is the mechanics of how payment for order flow works. If you want to know, you start here, you move to here, you go here, 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 and now I'm done. So if you want to know more, go to the website, <laughs> www.bettermarkets.org. So what are the real costs of trading on finance platforms and what's wrong with payment for order flow? Well, it creates a clear conflict of interest between retail brokers' duty to get their customers the best execution for their trades with the retail broker's desire to maximize their own profits. And so the retail broker wants to maximize the amount of payment for order flow. And the way to do that is for the retail broker's customers to trade as much as possible. So worse, that high frequency trading payment for order flow to retail brokers is greater for trades in small cap, less liquid stocks, think meme stocks, um, and riskier products like options. They have wider spreads and the HFT firms make more money. And, um, and what this really illustrates is that payment for order flow is really little more than legal bribery. The economics are straightforward. The more their clients trade, the more the brokers get paid, period. So free, in our view, is really fraud. So commission-free trading suggesting free trading is really little more than a slick marketing gimmick. It's misleading, if not fraudulent, in our view. The intent and or the effect is to lure in new unsuspecting customers and then induce them to trade as much as possible. After all, it's free. And the one thing every study shows forever is if something's free, it tends to be done more and it should be done. It's overused and overappreciated, no matter how non-free the free activity is. So how do the platforms get maximum trading? So that's because payment for order flow is kind of how the legalized bribery system works, but how do you get them to trade? Well, that's where the other claims of democratization come in. They claim ease of access, ease of use, and a delightful experience. The CEO of Robinhood cannot say delightful often enough. Um, so here's one commentator, tech developers like slot machine designers strive to maximize the user's time on device. They do so in designing habit forming products, products that are consciously on the same behavioral design strategies that the casino industry pioneered, no surprise, right? And another commentator put it, trading platforms like Robinhood are built on a Silicon Valley playbook of behavioral nudges and push notifications. Again, who does that sound like? I don't know. Any other platforms come to mind? Um, so gamification in the platform's business model um, work this way. It's a distinctive feature of Robinhood and the other trading platforms is the use of gamif gamification, which um, in, in includes design and deployment of features designed to trigger more thoughtless and riskier trading. So for example, celebration for trading, including celebratory graphics, games and contests with leaderboards and prizes, social networking tools um, with, mi that, with mimic trading in fin fin influencers, notifications and nudges via emails or texts, suggested trading uh, strategies such as options and trading on margin. These fe features are often addictive endorphin engendering features akin to what one might find in a video game, a slot machine or a gambling den. And so what are the real costs of gamification? 
And oh, why is it all so bad? After all, Main Street investors can now buy stock and get rich. That's what the rich have been doing. Why not me too? Well, because ease of access, ease of use, delightful experiences often result in platform customers being manipulated and exploited to engage in excessive trading that's costly and harmful to them, but lucrative to the platforms. Does that sound familiar too? So how do the platforms do that? Well, the gamification mentioned earlier, and for example, what do you get if you trade frequently? Balloons, confetti, all sorts of um, you know, positive feedback loops about great stuff. Now, in fairness, Robinhood was under so much grief for the confetti, they've actually eliminated the confetti. But there's all sorts of other confetti-like things that happen to you as you trade, and you get more and more of it um, and reinforce more the more you trade. But what do the platforms get if you trade frequently? Big bundles of money. That's what they get right there. So they want you to trade more. Now, in stark contrast, what do you get if you buy, hold, and the stock goes up and you get rich? You get the pile of money. What do the platforms get if you do not trade frequently? Nada, nothing. So the game is uh, to get you to trade. So what happens? So people say sometimes that happens, but how bad can it be? Well, the Financial Times just recently had this fantastic article about traders are phone up, phoning up gambling helplines as game-like broker apps spread. And the helplines of gambling addiction recovery groups have been ringing off the wall with new kinds of callers. And they're day traders, they're retail traders. So if you want any evidence about the addictive nature of what's happening with these apps, you don't have to look much further than the helplines at the uh, addiction recovery groups. So what does this really mean? Well, the Wall Street Journal had an interesting article about Robin Hood, three friends, and the fortune that got away. And this is a great quote from one of them. It's on his text. They text each other. Do you have more than 1,000 on Robin Hood, he asked. If so, I recommend using margin. So the other guy says, yeah. And no, no idea what the hell that is. And what does he do? He then trades on margin, right? And then here's the story that happens. His 30th birthday was the next day. He's checking his account. His, his stock went down 39%. He was $50,000 poorer on paper. The plunge prompted Robinhood to ask him for money to pay down the margin loan, a demand known as a margin call, and he had to sell stock to make the payment. So think about that. Robinhood's making money left and right, and now he gets a margin call, and he's got to sell his stock, and Robinhood's going to get payment for order flow on the stock sale to cover his margin call. And then if you read further in the article, it talks about how the app prominently features a metric called buying power that includes margin. But they, there's a hard time finding any similar disclosure of what they might owe if the bets on their stock soured and triggered margin calls. The New York Times did a great story too, last July or a year ago, July. Robinhood has lured young traders, sometimes with devastating results. It's users buy and sell the riskiest financial products and do so more frequently than customers at other retail firms but their inexperience can lead to staggering losses. So what was the result for the platforms? Well, Robin Hood's duo, the co-founders, and the IPO became billionaires in July of this year. It's an old and well-known story. I love this one. It's from 1940, a book called Where Are the Customers' Yachts? It's fascinating how all the brokers end up with the yachts and the billions, and the customers end up with paying for the fuel in the yachts. So the platform is rigged before the trading begins. Virtually everybody in the stock trading industry are sophisticated, highly educated professionals, often math and computer science PhDs, years of experience using the most advanced technology money can buy. And virtually all the amateur retail traders, regardless of ethnicity or age, are new to trading, have few resources, have no technology other than a laptop, a cell phone, and maybe a chat room. Okay? Uh, the, level, the playing field is simply not level. And that's before the gamification trips, tricks, and traps that are embedded in the platforms. And so the trading platform, the playing field isn't level. Think of it like a local men's baseball league playing the Houston Astros for money. The local players may get a hit occasionally or even get on base, but who's going to win the game? So this is the local spring 2021 season champs in a local Virginia county. Here's the Astros. Does anyone want to seriously argue about who's going to win that contest? I thought I would do that because it's the World Series this week. So I wanted, Jennifer also told me to be timely. And when Jennifer tells me to do something, I do it. Um, so that's very similar to what retail traders are trying to do every day. 
Even the name and logo are subliminally manipulative. Robin Hood taps into the childhood fantasy of good guys slaying the bad guys. And yes, back then they were all guys, sorry. Taking from the predatory rich and giving to the victimized poor. Now that's justice. So call your platform Robin Hood. Use a feather from Robin Hood's cap as your logo. And your name and your image convey they're on my side. They aren't like the others. They want me to get rich. Isn't that cute? And there's the real Robin Hood. You know, robbed from the rich, give to the poor. Here's today's Robin Hood. Make self rich, preying on the non-rich. Sheriff of Nottingham, I'm just thinking maybe we should suggest a different logo. I don't know. Anyway, to me, the ultimate predatory act is to prey on people's hopes and dreams, manipulate them, hide and disguise what you're doing in the cost, get them to risk what little money they have, when you've rigged the game against them to move money from their pockets into your pockets. Now, the platform claim of democratization is exploitation. It's not democratization. It's manipulation, it's exploitation, and the result is a massive transfer of wealth from new and experienced traders to experienced, sophisticated, and already rich financial professionals who are now even richer, often billionaires. So, what do the platform's proponents say? I know Jennifer worried if I was ever going to get to that, but I'm now here. Um, the financial platform industry, is its academics and political allies, lob, army of lobbyists, call this predatory democratization, innovation, choice, and freedom. For example, Senator Toomey introduced a bill yesterday. Jennifer also told me to be timely. Yesterday, he introduced a bill to prevent the SEC, or to prevent the SEC from banning payment for order flow, claiming it would stifle innovation like commission-free trading and user-friendly apps and would run up the cost for the average American. Well, first, always beware of the claim of innovation. It has been used for centuries as a shield against scrutiny and a sword against regulation, no matter how sensible. And remember, credit default swaps, um, CDOs, collateralized debt obligations, predatory lending, and lots more have hidden behind claims of, in of innovation until they blew up and impoverished people. So as important as other countries, so it's important to know other countries have commission free trading and user friendly apps, and they don't have payment for order flow, which is actually outlawed in the UK, Canada, Australia, and elsewhere. And retail traders there get all that low cost access innovation without the predatory manipulation and exploitation. So similarly, conflicts of interest um, are typically prohibited, not ignored, particularly when it costs consumers billions. Uh, they also claim retail traders have never had it so good. Well, that ignores the many alternate ways they could have it as good or even better. And the bottom line is this is really a wealth extraction, wealth transfer activity that cannot withstand independent scrutiny. So um, now be, to be clear, better market supports the genuine democratization of finance via finance platforms. More people should be able to participate in the stock market. That could and should include lower cost, ease of access, ease of use, and even a delightful experience. But it must be done by properly informed retail traders who are told the actual costs and risks of their trading or not manipulated to engage in excessive trading of the most costly and highest risk products. And done right, this democratization can result in broad-based wealth accumulation. So, properly regulating finance platforms. Uh, the SEC recently issued an RFI request for information on gamification, which it calls digital engagement practices, because in Washington, you've got to have an acronym for everything. So, Better Markets and tons of others filed comment letters. Ours is available on our website. All of the many comment letters are available on the SEC website. The SEC will likely propose a rule to better regulate such practices. I expect that will come before the end of the year. The SEC's most recent regulatory agenda also includes items to address payment for order flow, conflicts of interest, along with all the other issues that are raised by uh, the GameStop and other meme stock trading issues. Uh, the SEC, importantly, although already has tools at its disposal to address the harmful, if not illegal product, uh, legal conduct posed by financial platforms. The law already prohibits manipulation and fraud, requires full and proper disclosure, and that's why the SEC fined Robinhood $65 million last December. FINRA fined it $70 million in April or June of this year, its largest fine ever. The Massachusetts case is still pending. 
Um, there's also the recently enacted regulation best interest, which the SEC can and should apply. So as I said at the start, these events raise numerous issues. I've only talked about a few of them. I'd invite you to go to our website for detail and lots more. My written testimony in particular for the March 17th, 2021 hearing, uh, at which uh, my friend Alexis testified as well, um, is long and detailed. There's lots of information. There's fact sheets, reports, and summaries at the website. And otherwise, thanks very much.